<laughs> Good morning. And welcome to South Shores Kids. Woo! Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Dear Jesus, thank you for this wonderful week of Halloween and for the whole church. Amen. Hey there, South Shores kids and family, and welcome back to Kids Church. I have a lot of save the dates for your calendar, so get ready. Starting with save the date for November 20th and 21st for our Cars and Kids event. Come Saturday, November 20th between 1 and 4 p.m. for a chance to build your car with our special tools here on campus. And join us again November 21st for a day at the races. More details can be found at southshores.org slash cars and kids. The second is Christmas shopping. If you want to get a jump start, join us here Saturday, December 4th for our Christmas boutique and craft fair. It was a blast last year and it'll be a blast again. And then the next night, December 5th, from 6 to 7.30 is our South Shores Cares Night. Come here for a chance to pack care packages for our seniors and church members who are staying home this Christmas and a chance to deliver them and spread a little love. All right, guys, I've been trying to find Brian and Sophie everywhere. Brian didn't look like he was walking too well this morning, so I hope he's okay. Hmm, maybe he's in the large group room. I'll go check. Thanks so, so much for hiding from Katie with me. That was hilarious, but I gotta save my energy for the great race. Ah, oh, man, that was close. Hey kids, you know what time it is. It's time to stand up and get ready to sing. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore.
Great, how are you? I'm good, it's a little cold right now. <gasps> Whoa. Brian, what are you doing? Oh, thanks for the water. I'm running a great race, I'll be back. <clears throat> Sophie, I think he's a little confused about what Paul went by the great race. Watch this. Paul wrote a letter to the church at Philippi. He reminded them that true joy comes only from knowing Jesus. This is what Paul said. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. As you live, watch out for people who do evil things. Watch out for people who try to act religious. We are true believers if we worship by the Spirit, not trusting in ourselves or our abilities. Paul said that if anyone could be confident in his own abilities, it was him. Paul had been born a Jew. He followed the law and had persecuted the church because he thought it was the right thing to do. But now that Paul knew Jesus, the things that were once important to him did not matter at all. Nothing is more important than knowing Jesus. Paul said, I lost everything so I can know Christ and he is worth it. Now that I belong to Jesus, I am made right with God, not because of what I do, but because of what Jesus has done for me. I trust in him by faith. Paul wrote, my goal is to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. Paul explained that though he knew Jesus, he did not yet know him completely. God brings us into his family and wants us to know Jesus. Paul said, Brothers and sisters, this is what I do. I forget what is in the past and look ahead to the future. I run after the goal of knowing Jesus. This is a heavenly prize. Paul encouraged the Philippians to follow his example. He warned them, not everyone lives for Jesus. Those who focus on earthly things and live as enemies of the cross will be destroyed. But our home is in heaven. We are waiting for Jesus, our Lord, to come from heaven. He will transform us and give us glorious bodies by his great power. 
Following Jesus is like running a race for a wonderful prize. We remember that Jesus never sinned, but he endured the cross so we can have forgiveness of our sins. We press on to fully know Jesus and share in his victory for eternity. In our Bible story today, we learned that sometimes the Christian life is like running a great race for a great prize. As Christians, our great prize is eternal life in Christ. Jesus never sinned and did nothing wrong, and yet he bore the ultimate sacrifice so we could live for him in eternity. What an amazing price that is after a well-run race. All right, guys, now it's time for questions from kids. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Andrea from Midland, Texas asks, Sometimes following Jesus feels so hard. What should I do? Andrea, let me just encourage you, first of all, that yes, following Jesus can be hard at times. Sometimes people make it seem like when we trust in Jesus, everything is easy in life, everything is great. And that's really not the case. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says that we will be challenged quite often, and uh, sometimes it will be challenging to find Jesus. But we also know that it's worth it. The Bible's clear about this. There's nothing more important than knowing Jesus and living for Him. So what do we do in those times, which can be quite often when things are hard? The first thing I would do is say this, be easy on yourself. Um, a lot of times we start putting pressure on ourselves, and we demand more of ourselves and we feel like we're letting Jesus down. Don't go there. Um, just understand that God knows what we're going through. The Bible actually says that Jesus understands perfectly because he lived on earth as a man. And so he knows the frustrations, he knows the difficulties we face. And so he understands and he loves us and he accepts us because we've trusted in him no matter what. So be patient with yourself. Uh, these times when things are difficult, it will end. Uh, things will get easier at some point. Things get good at times. So no, this is just a season that you're going through. So be patient with yourself. The other thing I would say is this, keep after the spiritual disciplines they're called. Keep reading the Bible, keep praying. Even if it's hard to read the Bible and you can only read a verse or two, call that a win. Even if your prayers are simple of, I don't know what to say to you, God, but I love you and I trust you, help me. That's a win. So be realistic with yourself, but keep doing it. And the last thing I would suggest is this, let other people know that you're going through a hard time. God gave us one another for a reason. One of those reasons is to strengthen and encourage us. So when you're going through a hard time, let your parents know, let your Sunday school teacher or Bible study teacher know, let your friends know. Let them know so that they can be there with you, they can pray for you, they can help you, and they can encourage you. So here's a question back for you all. Do you know someone who could use some encouragement? How could you support him or her? thankful for this day. Please bless that we could have a good time and that will be good and that will continue at church and that we'll have a good time here today. Please bless that we could have a good time and that we'll always love others and we'll try to make them feel better if they ever get sad. And then Jesus goes, Amen. That's a wrap for another Great Kids Church. We'll see you all next week. Bye! <laughs>